Happy Easter, friends. I'm Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. If you are ready for some spring foods, you are in for a treat today. My video today is part of a special spring foods collab. It's hosted by my friend Kat with Kat's Southern Farm and Kitchen. So once you're finished here, be sure and check my description box. I'll have you a link to Kat's channel and to the playlist. Be sure and hop over to Kat's channel, give her a look, check out some of her other videos. If you are not familiar with Kat, you're going to love her. She is a Outer Banks, a North Carolina farm girl, and she does good home southern cooking. Be sure and tell her that I sent you, and also watch through this playlist. You will probably see some familiar faces, but I bet you'll find some new ones that you love too. So if you're ready for some spring foods, just sit back, relax, grab your sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Okay, the first thing we're going to make is dessert. We're going to make these lemon blueberry pie bars. And, spoiler alert, we're also going to make this. But I get these little books from Kroger, and really, you know, they're advertising their private selection brands, which are wonderful. Not sponsored, but I should be. I do so much for Kroger on this platform. <laughs> but anyway, um, I get these little books. They always have coupons in them, but I have found some of the best recipes in here. So this is what... Uh, we're going to start with today these lemon blueberry pie bars and we're going to start with the crust it says preheat your oven to 350 which i have that done so you don't have to listen to that today and we're going to make sure this is an eight by eight pan you know i have issues with measurements it's eight by eight pretty much from side to side so it's good enough so we know this is good we'll coat this in a minute but Let's put this crust together. I went ahead and just bought a box of graham cracker crumbs. It was actually cheaper to buy that than to buy graham crackers and make your own crumbs. Although I did buy a box of graham crackers for another dessert. But anyhow, sometimes, you know, it's just not worth the trouble. It's just easier and cheaper to go this route on things. Okay, so we're going to take one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs. This is a half cup measure, so there's a half. Into that, we're going to put a half a cup. It always calls for unsalted melted butter. I only buy salted butter. It's fine. Always melt them in these fancy melting cups. <laughs> Does everybody else melt their butter in a coffee cup? I only have one glass, like a measuring cup, that I melt stuff in. So most of the time, I just end up using a coffee cup. Let's normalize that. Melting butter in a coffee cup in the microwave. I love it. Okay. It calls for private selection turbinado cane sugar. Well, I didn't have that, and I wasn't going to buy it for this recipe, although I'm sure it is delicious. So I'm just going to put in two tablespoons of regular Kroger brand granulated sugar. I'm also going to be putting in the zest of one lemon and... Um, Guys, I zested four lemons today and squeezed the juice out of them. You know that's not normal for me, so I've went all out today. So let's get all this mixed together. I wanted to actually film all of this stuff for this special spring collab last week, and I wanted to take a picnic up to Cades Cove and take y'all through the Smoky Mountains there around the cove and show you how pretty it is in the spring but we decided here in East Tennessee to have dogwood winter last week. So that got shot in the dark. So today is my day off work. And I thought, I'm just going to make all of this today. And maybe this evening we can just take a picnic to the park. Well, 70% chance of rain today. It's been cloudy on and off. Okay, that looks like that is mixed up really good. Let me spray my pan, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, I've got my pan sprayed. You could line it with parchment if you wanted to do that and not use the spray if you didn't have any or if you just wanted to. Now we're just going to press 
this graham cracker crust down into the bottom of this pan. So yes, there we have today winds that are crazy, crazy. Like I just turned around and looked at my porch swing. It looks like there's a ghost out there swinging. So yeah, with the chance of rain and this wind, we probably won't get to have a picnic. But you know what? I'll do my best to try to drive around and get you some footage of these pretty dogwoods and this beautiful stuff that is blooming here in East Tennessee. But it's just uh, not been the Lord's will, I guess, for my plans to come. You know, they say a, a man says, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, but we bear check with the Lord first. <laughs> right? So, oh yeah, and also, my water's now cut off. They've been putting in a new water line down my road. Lord, they've been working on it for months. So today, when I'm home doing all this, my water's off. But I think I got everything done up that required water. I don't know. I just had a gut feeling with the way things had been going that I better get in here and get my butt in gear early that they might turn that water off today and work. Okay, now this little trick here, my friend Valerie, she has a YouTube channel. It's called The Hargit Life. I'll leave her link below too. She's a super sweet girl. She and I have collabed before. Now that girl can cook desserts. Well, she can cook anything, but she makes wonderful desserts. She showed this trick one time. This is how she pats her crust down. She uses the back of a measuring cup, and I just thought, how ingenious. All right, I got the oven at 350. Gonna put this in and let it cook for 10 to 12 minutes and we will let it cool. Okay, my crust is about done and it will have to set out here and cool, but I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my filling. I wiped out my bowl real good since I didn't have water. So in here, we're gonna take one can of the golden wonderful sweetened condensed milk. This stuff is so good. And we're going to take a half a cup of lemon juice and four tablespoons of lemon zest. And here is my half a cup of lemon juice. I squeezed this with my own hands. Y'all know, don't ever expect this kind of content from me on a regular basis. You know I'm a shortcut taker. So, this is such a special video for me. It said four tablespoons of lemon zest. I don't know if this is four tablespoons, but that's what I got off of the lemons that I did. It's close enough. Okay, I'm just going to do my eggs over this so I can try to separate them here and keep the whites because I will definitely put the egg whites in with, you know, scrambled eggs or something. So there's one yolk. Okay. Let's grab that crust. Okay. So let's let that crust cool. In here, we've got sweetened condensed milk, half a cup of lemon juice, the zest of the lemons, which is supposed to be about four tablespoons, and two big old egg yolks. And now we are just going to whisk this until it's really good and smooth and kind of thickens up a little bit. All right, that looks good. I'm going to set this aside. I may run my crust out there and stick it in the freezer because I'm impatient. And then we'll put it all together. Okay, my crust is pretty much room temperature. So now we're just going to take this filling and spread it all across here. It should just pour right in. Just want to spread it out. You don't want to mess up that crust, but you just want to make sure everything is covered real evenly. Then I have a cup and a half of these little um, wild blueberries that were frozen. These were private selection as well from Kroger's. These were frozen, and I did just let them sit out here at room temperature and thaw. And then I drained the juice off, and you're just going to sprinkle these in. You don't want to stir them because then you'd have a big, like, you know, a blue mess in there. And these are so tiny and cute. I did not know what the difference was when it said to use, um, you know, that this was wild blueberries. I thought, well, what's the difference between a wild blueberry 
and a regular blueberry. I didn't know, so I googled it. One of the main differences that you can see are these wild blueberries are very little. They're just tiny little things. And what I read said they're the blueberriest of the blueberries. <laughs> that their color is, you know, very dark. And they're full of antioxidants. The things that I read said the little wild blueberries to be so little that they pack like twice the antioxidants of the regular blueberries. Oh, see, there I smeared a little bit. So, see, this is health food. We didn't know it at the time, but we're making health food. <laughs> I'm joking. You know, you can't eat like this every day, but it's a special treat. This would be really nice to have. Of course, today is Easter, whenever this video come out, but uh, this would be nice to have for a little Easter meal. A little dessert. You could, oh, this is going to be good with some coffee. This would probably be really good for breakfast, too. And this thing is going to be packed. I mean, it's going to be covered in blueberries. This may be too many, but I don't want to waste them. I'm going to put them all on here. Well, I'll eat this last bite. Mm, they're good. Because I hadn't tried them yet. They're very good. Very sweet. Not one bit of bitterness. Sometimes a blueberry will taste bitter to me. Very good. Very sweet. I made a mess right there. I ain't perfect. Y'all know this. We're going to put this back in the oven. 350 degrees still. Going to cook it about 16 to 18 minutes. You're just looking for the filling to set and not be real jiggly anymore. And then you're going to let it cool to room temperature. Then you want to refrigerate it at least an hour before you serve it. So let's put her in. And here they come out of the oven. They are so pretty and I jiggle them just a little bit. They look like they are set up just fine. So I'm gonna let them cool and then I'll stick them in the refrigerator. By far the most work of any of these dishes was all the prep work. Lots of chopping, dicing, cutting, slicing of fruits, veggies, and various items so i decided to make that the first part of my day just getting all the prep work done if you're watching today as this goes live it is easter sunday and i pray that you've had a blessed easter if you were not able to get out and go to services at a local church in person i always have my church's youtube channel linked below and you are always welcome to join in with us you can go back and watch today's easter service if you'd like to we would be glad to have you there now we're ready to start on our chicken salad and i have three chicken breasts that i'm cooking up from frozen i've just got them in a pot of water on top of the stove and i'm just seasoning the water with some salt pepper throw in a couple tablespoons of butter and I'm going to sprinkle in some onion powder and some garlic powder. Now I will just bring this up to a bowl and cook it about 20 to 30 minutes, just checking on it ever so often to make sure that it is doing okay and everything's looking good. And I will leave you all the original recipes linked below in my description box. And while that chicken is cooking up, we're gonna make the dressing for this chicken salad. We start with a half a cup of mayonnaise, and I'm gonna use two tablespoons of lemon juice, and this is some of that fresh squeezed lemon juice. Gonna put in half of a Granny Smith apple and fourth of a red onion that I've diced up. Also have two green onions on that plate that I have diced up earlier as well. I like to make sure I have plenty of black pepper in my chicken salad. Just gonna stir that in and get it all incorporated well. And then I have taken my chicken when it cooled and chopped it up into smaller pieces here. And I'm just gonna add this into the dressing and again, stir all this together. At this point, I forgot the parsley. So I wanted to be sure and put some parsley flakes in here. 
if you had fresh parsley, that would be delicious here. And now I'm going to pull out a little bit of this for my daughter before I add the nuts. She does have a nut allergy, so I want to be sure and get her some out. And then I'm taking these applewood smoked honey maple pecans, and I'm going to chop them up into really tiny bite-sized pieces. Feel free to use whatever pecans you want or none at all. This is totally customizable to what you like. Once all that is mixed together, I'm just going to put the lid on this bowl and put it in the fridge to get nice and chilled for the evening. Now I've got a recipe for the best macaroni salad from eating on a dime. I have already boiled up a pound of elbow macaroni, drained it, rinsed it, and then I have put in the six ounces of the cheddar cheese that I cubed up. And now I'm gonna add in all the veggies that I prepped earlier. I've got half of a red onion and an entire red pepper. I'm also going to throw in a cup of frozen peas, and I have not thawed those out yet. They went right in from frozen. Just going to toss that around and get it mixed up a little bit, and now let's make the dressing. In my cup, I already have a fourth of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Into that, I'm going to put in a half a cup of mayonnaise. going to toss in two tablespoons of just regular white sugar. Then going to come in with two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Then I'm going to season it up with a little salt and pepper and mix all this together. Now don't worry if you don't get it completely smooth. You can see here that I didn't, but I know I'm going to be stirring it around in this huge bowl, so I'm not too concerned with it. It will begin to break down. And this is just a lot of mixing. This recipe did not call for hard boiled eggs, but I had boiled me up some extra ones because I thought I might like some egg salad later this weekend, and I just could not make a macaroni salad without having some hard boiled eggs in it. So I went ahead and took two of those and chopped them up and stirred them in too. And then put the lid on it, put it in the refrigerator for everything to get all married together and ready for this evening. Now we're going to make Paula Deen's Georgia Cracker Salad. This starts out with one big ripe red tomato that I have chopped up. I'm adding in three green onions and one hard boiled egg that I've chopped up. Into that we're going to throw in one and a half cups of mayonnaise. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix everything of my salad up together, but I'm not going to put the crackers in until I'm ready to serve it. You want to do that at the very last minute. And of course, you're going to want to throw in some salt and pepper into this as well. Just like all the other dishes, we're going to cover it, put it in the refrigerator till we are ready to eat it. And there is the sleeve of crackers ready to go. It's time for our picnic, and of course, it's raining, so here we are at home. I'm getting my cracker salad ready. Now I'm just taking this sleeve of crackers and crushing it all up over top of this salad and then you're just very gently going to fold them in and get it mixed together. This cracker salad, I can't tell you how much I love this. 
Now it's time to cut up our blueberry lemon bars. Look how beautiful they are, and these were so good too. So we're getting those plated up, and here's a look at our spread. I did put some cheese and turkey out for anybody who didn't want chicken salad. So let's plate it up and have us a picnic, friends. I can't tell you how good this tasted. I believe my very favorite thing was that Georgia cracker salad. This is something I seen Paula Dean make a long time ago, and I thought it was interesting, but I just never tried it. Delicious. Now it didn't make good leftovers. I just had a spoonful left for the next day. Not so good. The macaroni salad, chicken salad, delicious, and they just got better as the days went on with them. And here's a little sneaky thing I did on this turkey croissant. I put down some mayonnaise, of course, and some cheddar cheese and turkey, but then I snuck in some really thin sliced Granny Smith apples, and I hid them under a big piece of lettuce. Sometimes if you ask your family how they want something or if they want something, they won't try it, but if you sneak it in on them, they will. Friends, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to go over and check out Kat's channel and the entire playlist. I know that you're going to love it. I appreciate you, as always, for being here with me. And at the end of this video, I will leave you a link to a playlist of lots of spring and summer foods that I made last year that you may want to enjoy this summer. Again, I hope you've had a blessed Easter. And as always, until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.